Never ever, and let me repeat this, never ever in a million years did I think a five-star recruit would leave Nick Saban in Alabama to go to Colorado. But here we are. I said it while he was at Jackson State, and now I'm going to be saying it while he's at Colorado. What you're currently witnessing is the Deion Sanders, a.k.a. primetime effect. Ladies and gentlemen, make no mistakes about this. This isn't going to be a toe dipping into the water effect. It's much more than that. Let me give you a great example and put it into a better perspective so me and you, we can relate. What we're seeing happen in live time with Deion Sanders is the equivalent to an earthquake happening in the middle of the United States and it splits up the U.S. into two different countries. That right there is the magnitude of the Dion effect. Okay, now that I've said that, that might have not been the best example to use, but you get what I'm trying to say. Oh, you don't want to believe me or take my word for it? That's fine. That's cool. Well, how about this? Alabama's five-star running back has left Alabama and he wants to go to Colorado. I'm not making this up. You see the tweet right here. And by the way, that is just one small example. It's not just Alabama five stars. It's four and five stars all around the country. It has already been reported and said, and I think this number is already over three to 400, that over 200 recruits have reached out to Colorado in the last 12 hours. And those last 12 hours is when Dion was first hired. Like I said, that number's up to three or 400 at this point. This is flat out insane. May I remind you, you got to keep this in the back of your mind. This isn't Alabama. This isn't an SEC school. This isn't a Big Ten school. This is Colorado, one of the worst programs in the nation. If that doesn't go to prove the magnitude of the Dion, aka primetime effect, I don't know what will. We got to talk all about that in this Alabama running back leaving Alabama to go there. Or at least he wants to go there. My bad. Also got to talk about some other minor topics here and there. Y'all know how we do it on this channel. It's going to be a jam-packed video, but real quick, before Christmas, we're trying to hit 250,000 subscribers. Everybody knows this if you've been watching or you're new to the channel. We have one of the best college football communities in the world. The community we've built and are continuing to build each and every single day, it amazes me. I love you guys so much. Thank you for all the support. It really feels like I'm just having a casual conversation with my boys whenever I make these videos. Can't thank you guys enough. If you're not subscribed, help us get to 250,000. All right, Matt, blah, blah, blah. Shut the crap up. Now, without further ado, let's get into it. And oh yeah, by the way, for those wondering, we're currently at something like 242,000. All right, all right, all right, now let's get into it. Woo! Okay, anytime we talk about Dion or make a video about the situation, it excites me. And I think a main reason for that is because that's the energy that Dion Sanders brings out. I don't even play for the Colorado football team, but he's got me wanting to put on a helmet and pads and run through a brick wall. Before we get into all that, I do want to break some good news that just came out. The NCAA has announced, and I'm kind of shocked about this, that every player on Virginia's roster will be granted an extra year eligibility. I know there's going to be some of you wondering why in the crap are they doing that and that's because Virginia canceled their last two games because there was a tragic situation that went on. I'm not going to dive into all that too much. If you know what I'm talking about, you know it's just a touchy subject and I don't want to get emotional. I know we disagree on a lot of things on this channel, but I think we can all agree on this. The NCAA is one of the most corrupt systems out there, but they got this one right. This is a very rare, I mean a very extremely rare W from the NCAA. They did the right thing. I'm happy for the players. They get that extra year, but it still doesn't replace what they had to go through. Like I said, I'm not going to jump into that. I don't want to make this a sad video. I do want to bring that up though. And last but not least, I'm only going to talk about this for like 45 seconds before we get into the Dion mess. I'm sure all of you, you're familiar with JT Daniels. At this point, it seems like he's been playing college football for seven years. He's played for almost every single team in every other conference. He has now entered the transfer portal for what? The fourth or fifth time? I'm not even joking. It's the fourth time because he played at USC, Georgia, West Virginia, and now he's going to play for a new school. And I have no problem with it, but there's rumors going on that JT Daniels, when he was in the transfer portal last year, he demanded a house when he visited Oregon State. And I'm just going to read it off to you right here. He didn't go to Oregon State, but ultimately, he landed at West Virginia where he received an NIL package in the mid six figures. Wow, I didn't even know that was true. I thought they may have gave him 50000 but mid six figures, that's insane. Let me clarify on that. Mid six figures, guys, that means anywhere from about 400 k to 700 k Like I said, I like JT. I think he's a decent quarterback, but he's no CJ Stroud, Kayla Williams, or Bryce Young, or Hendon Hooker. That's just crazy to me. For one year, he got half a meal. That's absurd to me. Let me know your thoughts on that. But finally, moving on to the main topic, the main encore, the main reason you clicked onto this video, 
we gotta talk about Dion and these players wanting to go there. Let me show you this tweet first. This was like right when all the news was going out. It was tweeted out on December 4th. Coach Prime has been in Boulder less than 12 hours and has already pulled in the fourth five-star in program history. Here's what a North Carolina fan had to respond to that and I found it interesting. I think it's odd that he's being looked upon as a coaching god when he has a couple of good years in the swag. He's a big personality, I guess, and a splashy hire, but there's a very good chance all this falls flat. I do kind of agree with that. Of course, I agree with the big personality and a splashy hire, and you could also say there is a decent chance that all this falls flat on its face. I don't think that comment was out of bounds, but check on this reply to that one. Seriously, I have zero, in all caps, ties to Deion Sanders, but he got the number one recruit to go to Jackson State. Read that again. I can't even imagine what this guy's going to do with the facilities and financial backing of the Colorado football program. If he stays three or five years, they're in the playoff. Playoffs? We're talking about playoffs? I just hope they can win a game. <laughs> If you know what that's from, you know what I'm talking about. Who said that? I can't remember his name. I think it was the coach for the Indianapolis Colts. I, I don't know. If you saw what I'm talking about or referring to, you know. Getting back on a serious note, I could understand if you want to say in three to five years, they could be a top 10 team. Playoffs though? Oh, wait a minute. I forgot. It's no longer going to be four teams because in three to five years, it is going to be 12 teams. So, hey. No, I actually think that's a possibility. My bad, I completely forgot about that. We are in 2024 going to the 12 team format. Wow, see? This is why I like the 12 teams, because now you're going to see big time names like Deion Sanders possibly getting in the playoff. And that's just, it's just awesome for the fans. It's awesome for college football. They're going to get more money. Me and you as fans, we're going to be more entertained. It's straight up a win-win, but going back to his comment, that's what I said the past year or two. I think people did give him a lot of credit for it, but I still feel like it wasn't enough. The fact that he landed not a top 50 recruit, a top 25 recruit, the fact that Dion landed the best player in high school football at Jackson State, it didn't get enough credit. I mean, that's unreal. And what did I say about it? Man, if you put this guy at a power five school, I couldn't imagine what he's going to do when he gets all that money and the financial backing and the recruiting aspect of the game. What have I preached to you guys since day one? When it comes to the X's and O's, I'm not too sure if Dion's going to be a great or outstanding head coach. But, and I have a big but, the one thing I knew he was going to be great at, I knew he was going to be elite at, is recruiting. Why is that? Because he's a player's coach. He can relate to these kids. That right there alone is going to give him the one step up amongst all these other head coaches. And going back to saying, hey, maybe he doesn't know the X's and O's as good as other head coaches, that's the worst case in scenario. I actually think he knows the game. Why is that? Because he played it at a high level. And here's the thing. I see everybody bring up the X's and O's thing. It really doesn't matter because a head coach, yeah, you got to know your stuff and you got to make tough decisions, but a head coach, more times than not, they're not even calling the plays on defense or offense. They're just there to be a leader. Yes, you can call the plays on offense or defense if you want, but you don't got to. That's why you hire a defensive coordinator and an offensive coordinator. Moving along here, let me show you this tweet. A source at Colorado tells me over 200 recruits and portal transfers have reached out in the last 12 hours. Some of them are four and five star caliber players. Deion Sanders has a chance to make some noise before signing day and all our money is also rolling in, I'm told. Hmm, interesting. What do y'all think about that? You kind of had to guess that these boosters and these NIO departments, they're going to give Dion all the money he needs and wants. A source also said, quote unquote, I've never seen anything like it in my time here. But here's what got everybody rallied up. Alabama's former five-star recruit that entered the portal, he tweeted out of nowhere, you got room for me, Unc? And he added Deion Sanders in Colorado football. <laughs> Somebody said, UNC, he's in Boulder. Because I guess they thought when they saw Unc, they were talking about North Carolina, the football program, because that's the abbreviations. Oh, man, people on Twitter, you never failed to amaze me. But hey, I guess I could see how you got mixed up on that. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. Here's where things get a little more interesting, because two days ago, Coach Prime tweeted out this. Lord, that portal is jumping. Let me see what's in there. I ain't hard to find. And yet again, you're still going to have ignorant people saying stuff like this. Doesn't care about the kids at Jackson State. Doesn't care about the kids at Colorado. Cares about himself. The way he's always been in the media laps it up. Ah, oh, yes, because I'm sure this guy who tweeted this, he's had a conversation with Dion. Never fails to amaze me. I don't want to talk about it too much or get too amped up or fired up. 
But I've never seen anything like this in my life where a coach, a person, gets scrutinized for taking a better job and a better opportunity. I've never seen it in my life, and what I really think it is, people just envy Deion Sanders and they're jealous of him. That's the only explanation. It reminds me of this old saying, I've never met a hater doing better than me. I know that sounds cliche and corny, but think about it. Nobody doing better in life than Deion Sanders is hating on what he did. Have you noticed the people that write all these hate comments on Twitter, Instagram, or whatever? They're just random people with no life. In reality, everybody would have done what Dion did. People just like to complain to complain. Hey, yo, hold on. What is this? 6'1", 180 pound linebacker. Haven't played football since 2018. However, I'm ready to crack schools. 40 time. Really fast. Push-ups. Easily 15 plus. Quote unquote, I'm coming? What is this? Yo, 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 what, what, what actually is this? And what are you wearing, my dude? You look like a middle schooler on their first day of seventh grade with all the neon clothes. Heck nah, bro, this gotta be a joke. If this ain't a joke, I'm genuinely sorry, but... <laughs> bro, please tell me this is a joke. It's gotta be a joke. Wait a minute, hold on. I watched this kid back in the day, great leader on and off the field, best linebacker I've seen in my life. Reminds me a lot like Ray Lewis? What? I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> it was actually crazy, but check out this comment under Dion's post. No intelligent player should be interested in transferring to Colorado. Dion is only there for one to two years max. Until something else pops up that'll pay him six mil a year, zero loyalty, shameless self-promoter, he don't care about you or your future. You see, now here's where I gotta get amped up and I don't want to because you're just wrong. Dion Sanders does care about these players. It's more than a game. It's more than money. But once again, Mr. Nick, you're an Ohio State fan, go figure you wouldn't know that because you never talked to the guy. You want to know something I find really funny? If you don't listen to a single other thing I say in this video, please listen to this part. I have yet to see, find, or hear a Jackson State player that played for Dion say anything bad about him. Just think about that. None of his players, nobody that's ever met this guy, say anything bad about him. Oh, okay, I like this comment. Feel horrible for the kids on the team. He doesn't even know what he has with these guys. Telling all them to hit the portal is premature at best. Everyone knows he is going there. I hope he fails miserably. Under that, somebody said, 1-11 with a quarterback who threw 600 yards and two touchdowns. LOL, dang. And you're mad at him for wanting change, LOL? That's what I'm talking about. They suck. What do you want him to go in there? Sugarcoat things to say, hey guys, I'm going to keep all of you. No, that's not the truth. He's telling them the cold hard truth. And that's what we need in this world. More people like Dion. Let me ask you a question. If you're a head coach and you're inheriting a 1-11 team in this day and age where you can bring in players out of the transfer portal, would you keep all the guys on the team? I'd hope not. I know one thing for sure. I can't speak for you, but I can speak for myself. I wouldn't. And probably I'd be a little bit harsher than Dion. I might clean out the entire house. Last but not least, here's what Coach Prime said about 24 hours ago. I keep saying, quote unquote, I'm blessed to receive an offer from Colorado football. I'm cool with that, but if you know what I know, you need to start saying I'm blessed to commit to Colorado football because they're coming, baby. Get in now before it's too late. Hashtag Coach Prime, I ain't hard to find. If you have no idea what he's trying to say by that, he's saying that we already got a lot of guys coming in and we might run out of room, so you better commit. I see exactly what he's trying to do there, and I gotta give him credit. He's a good salesman. It's very similar to a furniture salesman or a car salesman. You go look at this new car, you tell the salesman person or whatnot, yeah, I like it, but I'm gonna sleep on and I'll be back in a couple of days. And then that said salesman tells you, well, you might want to act quick on it because I got three or four other people looking at it when in reality, nobody else is looking at it. This is an old trick in the book. I don't think any recruit's going to fall for this, but hey, maybe they will. And very recently, only about an hour, two hours ago, Coach Prime said, hey, 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 I'm looking for game changers on the offense and defensive line. I need smart, tough, fast, disciplined young men with character. I ain't hard to find. Let's go, baby. You got to give this dude credit. If you're hating on him at this point, you're a straight up loser. He's building something over there. I can't wait to see how this unfolds. As always, we're getting new updates on this Coach Prime situation every single day. So if you like this stuff, consider subscribing. And yeah, that's all for this video. Let me know your thoughts down below. But I wrote a